hi welcome back to my channel here is as promised my full review of my new smith's prs 40 auto this watch now i've had i've had it for a good few weeks and i've been really enjoying it i've wore it a heck of a lot i've had many people comment on it and let's face it the whole th normally on a review i'd start from the dial and work my way out but today let's face it this is all about that case design the case design is so unusual and it's the brainchild of an italian designer giovanni morio he basically as far as i know contacted smiths and they came up with this watch it's not the first time that smiths actually have used um, this case design a couple of years ago i believe they actually had a a quartz model which which they used this case design with albeit a little bit thinner and there is actually talk in the pipeline there's going to be a chrono version of that quartz and that i think will be a really exciting watch to look out for especially as the pushers are going to be mounted up here which will just look fantastic i think that's a really cool design let's take this strap off and you can actually have a proper look at this case i say normally i always like to work from the dial out but the whole thing with this watch is this case it has just got a real sort of like um non-nonsense kind of look about it it's almost you can see that the designer just wanted a real rugged solid yet very distinctive looking watch case and it really does achieve that in spades if you notice here it's got a very military feel about it because it has these fixed blades in here quite often with military watches they don't have spring bars they either weld in or have a solid bar going in where the spring bars would be but this goes one step further and it's actually been machined so you have this inbuilt it's integral to the case it's not been fitted afterwards it's integral when we talk about military it actually does have the military markings on the back so it is actually a very capable watch I just think it looks superb with this finish as well, this bead blasted finish. And of course, what makes it kind of um, stand out as well is the crown at the 12 o'clock position. Now, I have heard people say, who albeit haven't had handled the watch, say that looks like a, you know, how can you operate the crown being at that position? But I've found this is one of the easiest watches there is to wind, as when it's on the dial, as when it's on your wrist, it's just super easy to wind. This crown feels so solid. It's a nice chunky crown. It is actually signed with the Smiths logo there. And it has these amazing, because of its position, it has a fantastic crown guard either side of it there, which I really, I think it just, it is a kind of real hardcore rugged watch. I really do like this. Let's get actually talk about dimensions and size, you know, the dimensions here. It's a fraction over 40 millimeters. The actual lug to lug is almost 54, uh, 55 millimeters, almost just shy, which actually for a watch with a dial size of only 40 millimeters is very large. The spacing for the bracelet here, or the NATO strap, I should say, is 22 mil. So for a 40 mil watch with a 22 mil um, uh, NATO strap in there again is kind of odd sizes but still very very good the watch is only 12 point uh, just a fraction over 12 millimeters thick and that's to the top of you can see the crystal it doesn't it's maybe a fraction proud there but it is actually a sapphire crystal and on the underside we do have AR coating it does pick up some reflections obviously but if you would have the AR coating also on the outside then sometimes that can be very easy to mark. I've got a few zins which I can uh, definitely state that is the case. The other noticeable features, obviously we do have a screw down case back on here with all the markings pertaining to the watch. So what type of movement and so forth. Underneath this, if you were to remove it, you would actually see there's an anti-magnetic shield going over the movement, the movement being in this is actually a Seiko 6R15. Now that movement is a more kind of um, a slight step up from the Seiko 5 range. 
as in it has a better power reserve and a better timekeeping abilities. I got the same movement in a Seiko Saab and MM300, sorry, 200, and they're proved, proven to be quite excellent. If the watch is water resistant, its uh, depth rating, I believe, is 100 meters. The dial, it is a kind of, it's, it's almost like a satin, not quite, well, maybe matte, more bordering towards matte finish on the back. There's the minute track and hour markings are all printed onto it there, actually printed onto the dial, but very clear and legible, which is after all what a military watch should be all about. The, the loom on this watch is very strong. It's, I believe it's C3 Superluminova, I believe it is. And I find at night, if I'm to shine a torch, flashlight, whatever you want to pronounce it, uh, call it, onto it just before I go to sleep, I can read this watch all the way through the night. The hands have also um, quite well loomed. They've called a ladder style hands. And to be fair, the loom is very strong. Let me put it on a strap again. Now, this actually isn't the original strap which came with a watch. Let me just show you. I personally prefer this one to it, and I'll tell you why. The, the one which actually comes with the watch is this one. Now, this one's a little bit stiffer than this one I've got here, but the hardware on this one is actually color matched and it's all been machined and looks really nice. The only downside I would say to it is, you notice here, that isn't square. What I mean by that is it's countered on an angle and you can't move it. That's probably really the only criticism I would have with this watch is if that was square, it would be you know, just be a little bit better. I did purchase this watch from Time Factors. Um, I go through TZ, I'm on TZ all the time. So Time Factors I know quite a bit about. I am bothered contacting Eddie to say anything about that. There's no point. Um, I just don't think it's needed because I will be wearing it on this or I also have this leather NATO strap, which uh, G10, uh, which fits it perfectly. So I haven't really bothered. Um, I don't really think there's any need to there. But the watch, let me put it on my wrist so you've got an idea how it looks. Quick wrist check, I'm wearing a Rolex uh, Batman. Let me just do this off camera, it's a tad bit easier. Now my wrist size is a fraction over seven inches, so it gives you an idea. Let's put this on. But I say price-wise, I think this watch offers excellent value. I purchased it, I purchased it for £235, I think it was, from the Time Factors website. And I think for that price, that movement in this unique case design is fantastic. But there you go, that's it actually on the wrist. And I really do like that. I think it's got a unique you know, feel to it, a quality um, movement, which is when you think of that price, if you were to buy a Seiko, you'd be getting the lesser movement on there, not the 6R15 like this one has. And I just love it. I think it really is a funky looking watch. It really does, you know, kind of look the part. And as I say, for winding the watch, easy. Really incredibly easy to wind with that crown up at the 12 o'clock position. So anyway, I'll leave you to it. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask in the uh, down below. Okay, all the best. Take care. Bye.